This is the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the heavenly Father abideth forever. Alright, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that rule very well and teach very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Quick shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Kazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. Shout out also to you sincere Achim and Akwath, which is also Hebrew for you brothers and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, see y'all later. Say Shalom. It's the Ach Alaya, which is the brother Elijah. And I'm here with a quick exhortation and, and, and just a quick lesson through the Spirit and Power of Yahweh Hashem uh, In these last days, for the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. So, without too much else to say, as you can see by the title of this video, uh, Everlasting Life. Probably in all caps, you know. And, and I, I say. Uh, well, I want to go into this topic today, uh, really more so because um, it's, it's been on my mind for some time now, and the Lord actually gave me a remembrance of it this time uh, while I was, you know, brainstorming in the spirit, trying to figure out what lesson to do um, about everlasting life, man. Yes, technically, according to the scriptures, and we're going to get a couple, you know, few scriptures land back and improving. Uh, the point of what we just read in First John 2 and 17, which was a simple scripture, it wasn't anything too deep, but that being the point, uh, proving that everlasting life is going to be granted to the Israelites, right? To the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, starting with the elect of the nation of Israel, right? According to the scriptures, and matter of fact, let's read it again. First John chapter 2 and verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Right? What world is this really talking about? If you read up in the chapter, uh, even <laughs> at verse 16 um, and 15, you'll realize that uh, the context or, yeah, the main point of conversation is in regards to this current present world. How, you know, there's evil and wickedness and death present for the inhabitants the inhabitants of this world right the scripture says that in regards to this world this world is going to pass away and, and and it's really referring to the the current rulers the current systems and governments that's, that's in position and in power today chiefly dealing with you edomites that's the biblical name and nationality for you so-called white people right you edomites it, the scriptures talk about this current world power, this current world government and world rulership is going to pass away, right? Let's read it again. First John 2 and 15, uh, 17. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai abideth forever, right? And, and this is a fact and, and even a promise, man. A promise you know, through faith, uh, for those y'all who, you know, are within the spirit and can can receive it, you know, because you do have camps out here, uh, teaching against everlasting life, eternal life, man. Even though the Lord Yahweh Shai promised it to his followers, promised it to his followers, man. Living forever is a real thing. You know, the heavenly Father is an example of eternity existing before. Or just existing outside of time, period, right? So we know that it's not a far-fetched concept for the Heavenly Father to, to be able to give us and grant us something as precious as everlasting life, as eternal life, right? However, once again, like I said, you have people teaching against it, you know? So through the Spirit and Power of Yahweh Shema Shai, we're going to go Scripture upon Scripture, line upon line, here a little, there a little, and we're basically going to get some understanding in regards to everlasting life. All right. So with that, with that being said, let's go to another account. Let's go to an account 
where the Lord Yahweh Shah himself told his disciples that they would be granted everlasting life, told his followers. I would get the good old John 3.16. The good old John 3 and 16. Uh, however, I might get that a little bit later. That's a, a another beautiful one that hits right on the point. However, it's pretty common. I want to get some that a lot of people aren't too familiar with hearing. Uh, let's see. All right, this is Matthew. Actually, let, yeah, let's get Matthew 19 and 29. It says... And every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake. And this is red letter for those of y'all who don't know what that means in the New Testament scriptures, quote unquote. Uh, red letter means these are words that came out of the mouth of the Lord Yahweh Shai, who this world ignorantly calls Jesus. He literally said this. That everyone who forsakes houses, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, wives, or children, or lands for his namesake, it says, shall receive an hundredfold. You're going to get all that back an hundredfold, you know, meaning everything that you lose on this side, the Lord is going to give you back plus interest, man. And then some, you know, it says, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life right let's get this word everlasting life in the blue letter oh this one may not have service let me see i mean not service connection matthew 19 and 29 hold on, let me cross this road real quick so yeah basically i'm, I'm about to uh try to get a, a a better signal real quick uh but yeah yeah as the scripture said, man, shall inherit everlasting life. What is the word everlasting? It means it it lasts forever, right? That's that's where you get the word everlasting, right? But uh, I want to get uh, the Greek word right here for everlasting. I'm going to try to come this way a little bit, y'all. Just give me some time. Matter of fact, uh, while we're waiting on that, I'll just go ahead to the next couple of scriptures. But as you see, flat out plainly, the Lord Yahweh Shai told us that his, that his followers, for them, you know, going through all hell and being obedient, as we read earlier, those who basically obey the Lord to do his will, they will, you know, they basically going to have everlasting life. The Lord uh, Yahweh Shai promised that, you know, there's no way around that. A lot of people will try to twist the scripture and say he only uh, meant for an appointed time. That's not what he said, man. That's literally not what it says. And that's why I also want to get this Greek word because it'll shine some more light upon the word everlasting that he's actually using right here in, in context, in, in, a verse, in a verse, right? Like I said, while we're doing that, while we're waiting on this signal, I'm going to go ahead to the next scripture. It says, uh, John chapter 3 and verse 36. It says, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of the Heavenly Father abideth on him. Right? Going into how he's in danger of the judgment of that second death. Right? Point being, how the, the scripture plainly say, those that believe on the Lord Yahweh Shai, through spirit, you know, in, in truth, it says what? They have everlasting life that wasn't a guess he didn't assume that that was that was that was a fact it was a factual statement okay let's oh john 5 and 24 it shows that the lord yahweh shai says it this is john 5 and 24 verily verily i say unto you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life, right? We got some signal now, so I'm going to go ahead to the blue letter. But hey, as you've seen, the Lord Yahweh Shah just reiterated what we just read. Uh, let's go. Matthew 19, 29. 
All right. Let's get this word everlasting. <sighs> there we go. All right, and this is where I'm going to play it for y'all. Strong's G-166. Ionios. Ionios. Ionios, right? Which means what? Without beginning and end, right? Going into the understanding of the word eternal, right? Let's keep going. It says, that which always has been and always will be. Without beginning, without end, never to cease, everlasting. That's more appropriate for the context of this verse that we are reading, right? Because we know that the chosen, they won't be made eternal. They will be given, granted everlasting life at that point in time, but they won't be made eternal. It's not like... You know, they are the Heavenly Father, but they are going to be made in the image of the Heavenly Son, the Lord Yahweh Shai. And, you know, that's going to be it's going to be a literal point in time where the elect are going to be redeemed and their bodies are going to be transfigured and transformed to the point where death can no longer exist in their members. There is an point in time where that's going to happen. And then all the time after that, death will not enter into them, which means they have that everlasting life. Matter of fact, let me read the song's definition of this, right? It says perpetual, right? Look at that word perpetual, right? When you look at that word perpetual, what does it show you? It says, select it. It says everlasting, constant, never ending or changing, occurring repeatedly, right? That's what we're reading, that you're going to live constantly. You're going to live repeatedly. You're going to live not ending, which means death is not going to affect you. You know, let's get let's get another scripture real quick about the promise of eternal life. Then we're going to get some scriptures, like I said, proven real quick that there is going to come a point in time where that change is going to come and death will no longer exist in our members, which means what? We have to be able to live forever. That's literally what it means. If we're going to be made in Yahweh Shai's likeness, we know Yahweh Shai can never die. That's why he's able to impart that gift unto us. You know, let's see. And we know that what does the scripture say? Um, that basically sin is death. You know, that sin when it hath conceived bringeth forth death. You know, which means what? If we are in the kingdom of heaven, just think about this. If we're in the kingdom of heaven and sin can no longer conceive because we won't be able to commit any sins. Then what does that mean? We won't be able to die. It's literally... Uh, <laughs> It's, a, it's simple, man. That's what it is. It's literally simple. Uh, however, it's a spiritual thing that has to be given through the Holy Spirit in order for you to understand it. You know, this truth isn't set up for everybody. Yeah, everybody can regurgitate what they've heard. But at the end of the day, you can't make yourself believe. You know, your Hubbard Shemel Shah has to impart that unto you. And that, yeah, faith, belief is a spiritual gift, man. Uh, let's let me see. Um, uh, all right, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll read this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is just simple, uh, another simple one. John 6 and 47 it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Once again, yeah, the Lord, Yahweh Shah, even himself, reiterating, restating the same thing he constantly said. That when we return back to the Heavenly Father, he will never and no longer forsake us after that. Which means what? Life is going to be dwelling with us. Yahweh Shima Shah is the God of the living, not of the dead, right? The Lord Yahweh Shai uh, expounded upon that and, and rebuked the wicked scribes and Pharisees, and he cut them with that, you know, that Yahweh Shema Shai is the power of the living, not of the dead. Of course, that was in a different conversation, and it was used for a different point. However, that is still the truth. With Yahweh Shema Shai is life, and life more abundantly, life everlasting, life constantly, and this is what he promised to the nation of Israel, right? Let me get a couple of scriptures, like I said, proving 
that this time is going to come. Not only was it promised, but we're actually going to receive it. Like I said, let me prove that real quick. Uh, all right. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'll start at verse 50 just for uh, for the context and point sake. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And a lot of Christians will take this verse and run with it and say, We're not going to have physical bodies in the kingdom of heaven. That's not what this is saying. This is saying a carnal mind, a carnal fleshly wicked mind is enmity with the Lord and, and can't be subject to the laws of the Heavenly Father. This is basically what Paul is saying in this beginning of the scripture. Let's read it again. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So, yeah, you got to be pure and undefiled in mind in order to come into this truth. And then even the transition into the kingdom of heaven, we have to literally be taken from this vile, wicked, sinful flesh, man, that we currently inhabit, that we currently live in. Why? Because this current sinful flesh has to repent. This current sinful flesh can sin and commit iniquity and go off and be killed, right? And can literally kill, can literally be killed. So Paul's explaining to us that this current flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom that is promised, that's been a purpose for us. Why? Because in that kingdom, everlasting life exists, not death. For us, you know, everlasting peace exists, not cruelty, enslavement, and punishment, you know. So let's continue on, verse 51. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, right? What is he talking about? That exact moment, that exact period and time where the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai returns back to the earth through the abundance of his spirit, and he changes and transfigures the bodies, the literal physical bodies of his people. The chosen, the elect of the nation of Israel, starting with that 144,000 elect men, right? And then the great multitude following right after of the men, women, and children of the nation of Israel who, whom still believe and profess the same gospel. You know, their bodies are going to be changed, right? As it says in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, right? The last trump, that last judgment, right? The Lord is telling you, that at the end of the world, when the last trump goes off, when the last judgment goes, which is the, the thermonuclear missiles raining down upon Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, ICBM thermonuclear missiles being shot across the sky and being detonated, blown up in America. At the sound of that last trump, it says, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed, right? Those who have already passed on into the spirit world, who have held the testimony of Yahweh Hashem and, and and you know, in the true gospel, you know, those who have already passed on into the spirit world, they're gonna be resurrected to everlasting life. That's what it just said. The dead shall be raised incorruptible, right? They're gonna be raised from death, no longer able to see it again. It says, and we shall be changed, right? Those who remain alive in the earth. At Yahweh Shah's appearance at this time period, they're going to be changed as well and given the same exact bodies of those who were dead and have now been resurrected. We're going to be given the same body the Lord Yahweh Shah has. We're being changed in his to his image, you know. It says, verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. What is immortality? Immortality, right? <laughs> immortality means a uh, long life to be immortal not to die you know to be mortal means to have an expiration date you know to be immortal means you you, you can't die you know that's basically what it means that's literally what it means you don't believe me look it up right first corinthians 15 and 54 it says so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. 
And when was death swallowed up in victory? At the resurrection of the Lord Yahweh Shai. When he was revived back from his dead state. As the similitude and as the sign of the prophet Jonah. Even according to the Lord Yahweh Shai's own words. The, the sign of the prophet Jonah would be the only sign that this wicked, adulterous and sinful generation would be given. Which is that he would be put to death. He offered up his life to be our sacrificial lamb for our sins and our iniquities. You know, and then after those three days and the three days and three nights of him being, you know, in the spirit world, the Lord Yahweh gave life back into his vessel. And he was resurrected in, in, a, in a new form, a new body, right? That that was changed, not like the body he had before, because the body he had before, he was able to be crucified. He was able to die, right? This new body he has now, he's been made immortal. He can no longer ever die, you know? And, and, and this is the point here. Death was swallowed up in victory at the Lord Yahweh Shah's resurrection. And he has now brought that same victory to us. You know, keep in mind, that's why he died to be able to resurrect us with him. You know, it says in verse uh, 55. So I can. It says in verse 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Now, why would the Apostle Paul say this? It's because he's talking to the Israelites. <laughs> he's talking to the Israelites whom have been condemned by their acts of wickedness and by their evil practices, their idolatrous mind states and their wicked, sinful, perverted judgments, man. And and, and all their, their sexual immorality that they practice and, and perform and perpetuate, you know. All of this, man, the, the, the nation of Israel as a whole has been condemned by their sins, right? But the Apostle Paul is, is reminding them of the mercy of the Heavenly Father, Abi Yahweh, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. Through him, death no longer has a sting, you know, and the grave no longer has a victory over us, man. Although it seems that we may die uh, before the people, and though our end may seem to be in misery, yet they are in peace. Roughly paraphrasing, man. This is the, the, the point of the scripture, meaning although even some of the believers might die, guess what? The, our ending is truly going to be in peace, Lord, when we be at that number because we're going to be resurrected back to life. And then not only just to life, but to life everlasting. You know, not everyone can say this, man. This blessing has only been set up and ordained for the nation of Israel, for the Israelites, right? Let's read verse 56 and verse 57. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 56, the sting of death is sin. So death no longer has a sting to us. Why? Because we will no longer be able to sin in the kingdom. It says, and the strength of sin is the law. So if the law is what condemns us to death, if we've now been resurrected to everlasting life by the righteousness of the law, which is the Lord Yahweh Shai, then how much more shall we live in the kingdom of heaven, man? You know, it says in verse 57, but thanks be to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. No, it's like him. But thanks be to the heavenly father, Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shai. As I was explaining, man, it's through our Lord Yahweh Shai that, that this blessing, this miracle, has now been afforded to us, has not been given to us, you know. But uh let me see. Is there anything else on here? That's that's pretty much all now. I do want to get this last scripture. Okay. This is the book of Revelation, chapter twenty one. And let's start at verse three. We're gonna read verse three and four, and then we're gonna end it on this, man. Hands are getting caught out here. It's getting dark. All right. It says, Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven. And really, I should start at the top. Yeah, I'm going to start at the top real quick. And let's go on down. <laughs> this is Revelation 21 from the top. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It's talking about a new kingdom, a new rulership that exists in the earth, right? What new kingdom, what new heaven is that? Even in the book of Second Esther, it tells you that Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. 
right? So if Esau Edom is currently ruling now, the so-called white people, and their rulership goes down, they're taken out of power. Well, according to that scripture in Second Ezra, I just quoted, the kingdom and nation of the Israelites will be established next, right? And this is this new heaven and new earth that we're reading about in Revelation, chapter 21. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea, right? And I saw it, which was talking about America. It says, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the heavenly father out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right, that's talking about the elect being beamed back down out of those chariots back into the earth, you know, to continue doing the will of the heavenly father, you know, going and making sure the nations are being brought to the land, you know, bringing out judgments upon the people, slaying people to death. Hey, this is this new government that uh, John, the revelator, is seeing come down out of the sky, out of the chariots. It's the elect, the chosen of the nation of Israel. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I mean, they're going to be completely all white, right? Which is, represents the righteousness of the saints, you know, which means there's going to be no sin in them. And then it said adorned for her husband. Who is the husband? The Lord Yahweh Shai. Means that we're going to be prepared perfectly for the Lord Yahweh Shai at his appearance, which means there's not going to be any sin amongst us. There's not going to be any sin in us. Otherwise, we would not be, uh, be able to stand before the Lord Yahweh Shai in righteousness. It says in verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the heavenly Father is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the heavenly Father himself shall be with them and be their power. And this is the point right here, verse 4. And Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. What does this mean? There shall be no more death. There shall be no more death, man. That means what? In the kingdom of heaven, everlasting life will be a thing for the Israelites. There's no you live a thousand years and then you die. None of these scriptures, none of these precepts say that. Yeah, we know a thousand years is as a day to the Lord and one day is as a thousand years. But that's just that. One day is a thousand years. The Lord didn't promise us only to live one day in the kingdom of heaven. No. The Lord, Yahweh Shai even reiterated that we will be granted everlasting life through the salvation of the elect man you know let's finish this verse and let's wrap it up revelation 21 and 4 and Yehovah Shem Yahushua shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away what are the former things the sting of death man Sin, you know, sin is the sting of death. That will be passed away. We no longer are our servants and followers of this present current world. We are no longer doers and practicers of iniquity. We are no longer casted away. We are now received back. We are now righteous. And, and, and we are now doing all the works of the Heavenly Father uh, in perfection to, uh, to everlasting, man, you know. There will be no end to the reign of the Israelites because none of them will be dying, which means all of them are going to be righteous, which means, you know, there's no, there's no stop. To, there's no end to that, man. No, not one. Even the least Israelite in the kingdom of heaven will still be immortal. We'll still have everlasting life, man. You know, but, but with that, I hope this lesson and exhortation was edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Uh, yeah, with that. I'm going to go end it. Shalom. Call Halloyim la Abanawa Yahawa, Bahashram, Yahawa Shai, Bahashram, Rachaha Kurash, Wa Ababa Ball, Delta America.